Hey everyone, this is Chris Keys for Premier Guitar, hanging out at the Ryman Auditorium with Whitey Morgan. Whitey, how you doing? Great, man. Great. Thank you so much. I, I believe this is your first time playing here, or first time headlining? It is, man. Been been wanting to play this place for as long as I can remember. Well, welcome to the Mother Church. Yeah, man. It's good to be here. Cool. Enough of the formalities. Let's dive into guitar yeah, talk, let's man. Talk some guitars. I want to dive into the first one that I've always associated with you is with your initials on it. What Telecaster is that? And tell me, talk to me about how you kind of got that to be your number one. Um. Well. This is actually, this thing started out, it was a black and white uh, single bound telly. I probably bought this maybe 15 years ago. Damn. And I just, I got over the black and white real quick. And I yeah. wanted, the, I wanted this, like a tobacco burst, which has always been my favorite. And I just took it apart, sanded it down. And I, I used to be, in a, I used to do custom paint cars oh, right. and stuff. So it was pretty easy. I just put a little fade on that thing. and. And uh, did a little pinstriping on there, which kind of turned out shitty, but it looks pretty cool. <laughs> uh, this is about the fourth neck that's been on it, because I, I used to like the vintage style net uh, frets, okay. but they just would wear so quick. I mean, we were playing 300 days yeah. a year, and so I this one finally I went with stainless, and this is this neck's been on here for probably four years now. All the four necks that you've gone through have they always been maple, maple necks, yeah. maple boards. Yeah, I'm not much of a rosewood guy. I like the pop of the you know the maple but uh yeah this is a this is so it's a fender body this is this is a warm mouth neck on okay. it and uh oh. i saw online a lot of people are asking about tone and stuff and like what if you're willing to change out pickups and it looks like you got some uh seymour duncans in there is that something you've had for a while is that something you just got put in there um these actually a guy up in michigan wound these for me um oh, all right i can't even remember his name it's been it's it's been at least four years but what's cool is it you know it's like a standard hot rail but it's got the push pull for the if you want the all single right. coil sound cool which i find myself leaving it on the humbucker almost all the time get it now. cooking yeah it just gets it just got more body especially like on these bigger theater stages where you just want it to fill up a little more yeah yeah but uh it's it hasn't been messed with in a while but uh i'm always up for changing stuff out i'm I, i'm pretty fickle i <laughs> I got a lot of different amps. I switch out guitars a lot, but this thing's been the mainstay, I guess, for a lot of you know, 15 years now. And this, this thing. And what's behind the headstock there? And it looks on oh, the yeah. IE. That's just um, it's a banjo tuner. Ah. Just kind of stole that from Waylon. Yeah. We got a lot of songs that are in drop D, and it's just it's just easy. It's got the two locking nuts there, and uh, it's a it's actually a Bill Keith. Um, they make the Schaller makes one, but I've. I've this Bill Keith one has stood up for the, the probably six or seven years now. The Shallers, I went through like three of them in probably Just bust them in off. five years. Yeah. Yeah, so I finally paid the big bucks for this one and it's it stood the test of time. It works it works great. It takes a little getting used to. A lot of my guys that have tried to tune it, they're like, they can't because it's <laughs> it's super the ratio. I mean you barely oh, turn really it finicky. and it yeah, it's you gotta really have the touch, but once you get used to it, man, I love it. And it's just the ease of being able to, in the middle of the show, just boom. Right down. Yeah. And it looks cooler than the that big old stupid, what yeah, do they call the those things? Yeah. It, like, yeah. yeah. It's just, I don't know. Not my style. And uh, what strings do you run? Gage and uh, Brand? Um, on this guitar, these are just regular Ernie Ball 11s. Okay. Nothing special yeah. about it. Just for this, for the number one, cause for all the regular tune stuff. I've got some other ones that are drop tuned with the big fat strings on them. How did you get into the Telecaster world? Obviously associated with you already alluded to Waylon and any other other country pickers, but what, aside from being a country in instrument, yeah. what got you into the Telecaster world and keeps you there? It was probably like that. Like I said, Waylon and I just, I was playing acoustic for a while. I mean, I'd always played electric, but when I started doing the country thing, I, I started out doing it acoustically and I just found myself wanting to play more and to do more on stage. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the acoustic just never, really cut through it never just had the balls yeah and i was like i i come from a rock and roll background so eventually i just grabbed the telly and the, you know the telly you know is a, it's the workhorse man yeah you can take it on the road this this case can get 105 degrees and you know you you pull them out and they might not be perfect but you can make slight adjustments and they'll be right back to where they were now if this thing was full of less pauls or you know the, the one piece guitars you're yeah in fucking nightmare land all day long <laughs> this thing you know i mean i actually this, this neck got put on after a sound check. We were playing an arena show, opening for Bob Seger, and the frets on my old one were so bad, I was so sick of just listening to it all night. It just, the intonation was terrible. Yeah. I had this neck, it got shipped, and I wasn't gonna, I was gonna wait till the next day when we had a day off to swap it. Have some time. 
I had a guitar tech buddy of mine from Elderly Instruments in, in, uh, in Lansing, Michigan, and he did the, the neck switch over from between Soundcheck and our, and our set, which was only like an hour and a half. Yeah. And he goes in there, swaps it out. It's, it's played great ever since. It's crazy. The, the, Bob Seeger's guitar techs were like, he's going to do what? He's going to, on your number one telly, he's going to swap that neck out in an hour and a half? I'm like, yeah, well, this guy's good, man. You don't, you know. You'll see. But yeah, it's, uh, it's been a great, great guitar. It's, it's taken some tumbles. I've, Joey's uh, missed it a couple of times when I've thrown it to him. <laughs> but uh, that's the great thing. Yeah. Neck fucks up, you uh, just put a new one on it. I mean, there's a reason they haven't really changed too much on it in 60 plus years. Yeah. Like I said, man, that's, a, that's the workhorse right there. Cool, let's start going down the line. All right. So that's the main one. I don't really get, I don't really get into the other guitars too much. I've got, um, I've got one that's tuned to C sharp that I use for one song. What song's that? Uh, Waiting around to die. Oh. It's usually at the end of the night, it's because it's tuned to C sharp, and it's, a, and I play the little acoustic part, but I play it on on that because to have an acoustic guitar drop to C sharp on stage would be a nightmare to keep it I was going to ask about else. that solo in that song because I didn't yeah. know if it was like a national tuning or like a mandolin. Well, no, it was like um, really uh, that's piercing. That's Joey on, um, he's playing uh, the, like a gut string or okay. a nylon string. Yeah, I think it's it was. really identifiable. I'm not sure which we used in the studio there, but yeah. Cool. Oh yeah, that solo is killer. He killed that thing. Um, so this one is going to turn into number two. Fender just sent me this. This Oof. is one of their, um, the American Original series. It's a 62 reissue. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to playing this. I had this set up with like the big beefy strings on it. The whole guitar is dropped to D so that when I need to, I can drop it to C. Yeah. I've got a couple of songs on the new record where it's real, some low twangy stuff. And uh, so this will end up being number two. There's like four or five songs that'll end up being played with this one, which I'm looking forward to. This thing is almost too shiny, but <laughs> I'm sure you'll throw it a couple man. times. <laughs> Double bound. I mean, this thing's bitching. Do you like uh, the limited time you've had so far? Do you like the Rosewood fretboard? Yeah, and that's the thing too is the, the songs that I'm going to use it on. Though they make sense for that. Okay. But like, that guy needs to be on the other songs. But yeah. It, but it's you try to figure it out, man. It's, yeah. It's a <laughs> try to find a spot for yeah, every one exactly. of them. Exactly. This one um, started out, this is a 74 Custom. Oof. I got this at uh, Carter actually about a year ago right here in Nashville. I played it like three times on stage and I like it, but it's the, these, these pickups are just a little too, I wouldn't say muddy, just a little too dark. Yeah. And the songs that I was wanting to use it for, I needed that bright, mm. I needed a, more of a bright pop. and I, and I'm not going to mess with this thing. So I'm, it just sits in here. I literally hasn't, this is probably the first time it's been touched in six months. Well, made some camera time. But I also was just talking to one of the openers. He might take it off my hands. He's a good guy. I'll give him a good deal on it. Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> but yeah, but I mean, it's sweet. I just, you know, you, when you start having so many of them, you, you, I want them to get played. Yeah. It's, it's meant to be played. I have guitars that sit at home. I wish I had time to even put them up and sell them to people or whatever, just because it's, it's, it, guitars need to be played. They're yeah. not meant to sit in the closet. You know, some of them are. They're tools. But something like that. That that thing's seen some 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 wear and tear, and it needs to see some more. <laughs> Before people will always ask, so I, I'm glad I'm thinking this is uh, the strap. Where did you get that strap? Um, I'm assuming custom made. It's beautiful. Yeah. Um, man, what is the guy's name that made that for me? Um, Cody Hickson All made right. that for me. It's been a it's, that thing's it's been a few years, maybe four or five years since he made that. He made. Um, that one for me and I had one made for a buddy that, that he did and uh, yeah he does great leather work I, I'm not sure where he's out of somewhere in Tennessee I can't remember it's been a while since I talked to him I need to get a couple more made because it's pain in the ass swapping over uh, straps for yeah. every <laughs> yeah. you know, every guitar but now that I'm gonna be running three or four guitars a night now I need I'm definitely gonna need some more straps but CodyHickson.com I think you guys want to check him out cool does great work and is that the Gibson that you're kind of alluding to before up top here no, this is um, this is actually a Fender acoustic. Ah. Um, my uh, my acoustic guy plays this. I found this so when these first came out, they did a couple years where they made these higher <laughs> end Kingmans, mm -hmm. and uh, I just loved it. I played it um, like I said when they first came out, but I never got one. And then about about six months ago, I was. I, I was having uh, a, a guy fly in and fill in for a gig, just just playing acoustic and singing harmonies. Yeah. 
and I was just like, oh shit, man, maybe I should just get, instead of him having to fly, because I've been wanting to buy a new acoustic, maybe I'll just get something and then he can just play it and it can just live in the guitar vault, you know? And I went online and found one of these. It's it got a little damage to it, but these things were 1900 bucks when they came out. Yeah. And back then I was like, I can't afford that right now. This is, you know, probably 10 years ago. And uh, I found this on reverb.com. I talked to the guy down to like 450. You're a shark. With shipping. <laughs> it's like, I'm glad I waited however long, but I yeah. mean, it's it's a little beat, which is cool about it. It's got some some stress cracks here and there, but this thing plays. I mean, the, the action is so low on it, it plays almost like a Telecaster. Dang. And the, it's got the good Fisherman uh, rig inside of it. So. Cool. But yeah, Tony, he, he seems to like it. And he doesn't have to bring his guitar out anymore and get it. Yeah. Beat the hell. He just beats the hell out of this one. Cuts down on his shipping costs or his. And it uh, looks bitching, man. Come yeah. on. The tobacco I mean, burst. You can't beat it. Tobacco burst, and of course, the king played one. Yeah. So, is that all you got for guitars over here? Yeah, I mean, the rest of them are just kind of backups. backups. Cool. All right, Whitey, talked about guitars. Now let's talk about amps and then I uh, guess your minutive yeah. pedal board. So. Yeah, well, my, my, uh, my stuff's pretty, pretty simple. So, I guess my main amp that I've been using for about a year now is this Vibro King. It's, it's uh, I believe 2012 is when they reissued these. I've been wanting one for a long time. And again, it's one of those things where, you know, back then I just didn't have the money to drop because when these came out, they were like 3,500 yeah. bucks because it's, you know, hand wired and more of a boutique vibe, I guess. Me in California. And uh, so anyway, about a year ago, I again, reverb. Dot com got on there <laughs> this dude had one of these that had been in the shop since it it's never been out of the shop since it was new couldn't hasn't sold it i talked him down <laughs> i said what do you think about uh 1800 bucks um and, and uh he said uh he said man you're killing me or something there was like some kind of quote he but he, but he said i gotta get this thing out of my shop i'm sick of looking at it you know and uh okay. I, yeah, seventeen. I think I might have been eighteen with shipping. I was gonna say who paid shipping because last the, the, yeah. the acoustic was yeah. included. Yeah, I think I, I think it was about eighteen with shipping, but it's been good. I've had some issues with it here and there. What the one the thing I don't like about it is I'm I'm originally a twin guy, so I like the big low end. This doesn't have it, but it's got really good, just that right amount of breakup. Mm. Um, so yeah, I love it, and the uh, the reverb channel on it's great. You can really dial it in. Um, but lately I've been running two amps. Okay, so like a stereo thing? Yeah, this is my, this is kind of my fail safe. I have two of these that run in the trailer just in, the, just in case rever uh, twin reverbs, you know? Yeah. They're just the 68 reissues, but they actually sound really good. Um, I used to run just one of these for a little while, but then I started mixing in some other stuff. And my, my Super over there kind of took a crap the other night. Usually I run the Super and the Vibro King together. All right. So broke the, uh, the old twin back out. For, for the last couple shows, um, my 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 big plan, the grand scheme of things, is I'm probably going to get another '66 Super, and um, I'm thinking about Eminence just come out with these. Um, they call it the it's the, the the Legend. It's like a 12. It's a 200 watt 12, and I think I'm going to put one 12 in 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 uh, in each Super. That might be my new rig. I'm. I mean, every six months these yeah. things are getting swapped out. I just get bored with things. What do you? What's the Besides allure? Besides my one guitar, everything else I get bored with. <laughs> <laughs> what's the allure of the the, the new Eminences? What what kind of sold you? Maybe well, trying those. My steel player won't shut up about them. So <laughs> I mean, I, I'm always for trying something, and his rig is sounding great. And that's I think he's running one of those in one of those cabinets. Um, and I just I think lately I just I'm thinking less speakers more wattage yeah. is the key because they start running too many speakers out on back of you. you got everything's phasing out you got sound waves are fighting mm. each other and uh so i'm thinking yeah two 12s one in each cab you're talking 45 watts i think is what the supers are running at i think it'll sound great killer and, uh, i mean you know eminence makes great shit, so i can't imagine it won't sound great can't but that as far as amps that's about it man cool let's talk about pedals here you got three yeah um Again, pretty simple. The old uh, pitch black tuner. I've been running that forever because I have terrible. I don't wear my glasses on stage. I can't see shit. And that thing's got the big old. <laughs> it's you know, it's like for old people. It's a tuner yeah. for old people. Um, and then uh, the diamond compressor is something that I found uh, when I was doing the this last record. We were at Sonic Ranch, and we kind of we had like a compressor shootout, and that thing won. So I ordered one like the next day for tour. 
Um, and I've been, I've really been loving that. Does that stay on to kind of give That's it? That's on the whole time, yeah. yep. Um, the EP boost, it's just a clean, obviously everybody knows what the, it's just a clean boost. Been working good, haven't had any problems with it. Doesn't, I, from what I can hear, it doesn't really color the tone, which is important to me. I don't, I don't need any more breakup or any of that shit. Yeah, I was gonna say, are you getting the amps pretty cooking and then that just kind of pushes yeah, you a little just further? A, that's just a clean boost and I use it just just for my i have you know a few leads here and there i use it on um yeah that's about it um the phaser man that's a secret weapon for you guys not a secret weapon yeah. but i really love oh that. man i've been it takes me I've, back i was telling you earlier i think don't think there's a phaser they make that i haven't tried yet that's and that one i hadn't even heard of until again we're sonic ranch this guy breaks it out of the gear closet he's like oh, I, I used this a couple years ago on a record it's great and again we did a shootout with a bunch of other ones um, some more vintage style ones. I can't remember exactly what they were, but but that Univox microphaser is uh, it's mellow. Oh, it just has a speed control. Yeah, on I was gonna it. say Nothing. there's not. A, yeah, it's on the side there. I see it. Yeah. Okay. And I was actually really excited because I ordered a Diamond Phase after I got that compressor. I'm like, oh, their shit's great. I'll just order their phaser, and it was good. It was just it was almost too much going on for yeah. me. Yeah. Like every time I'd fuck with something, it would take it too far the other way, and I'm just. I just I just need the speed. That's all I need. Yeah. It's it's mellow. It's kind of a darker, darker phase. It's I'm like a like a the phase ninety kind of gets mm -hmm. a little abrasive. I used to use those forever, but the problem with those is, as soon as I would hit it, it was almost like a boost. Yeah. It was like a boost slash EQ change, and it would just I would almost have to roll my tone knob mm -hmm. back as soon as I'd hit that phaser because it was, you know, it was like too much. Yeah. And I love the the phase the phase ninety, but that was that was always the issue there was I just felt like I was coloring the tone too much. I mean, I this, this thing's been this thing's been great. I mean, that, I just love that those tones that you guys use, and it's so distinct too with the phase. Yeah, and it just and it looks it up. bitching. I mean, look at yeah. that. It's like, that thing's cool as shit, man. Yeah, man, I love the single note stuff like on Sinner. That shit is just so lush yeah. and so just so smooth. Oh yeah. All right, Wadi, I'm gonna talk to the rest of the band. Thank All you right. so much, brother. Good luck with them. <laughs> Absolutely, thank you, sir. Thanks. All right, far end of the stage with Joey. Joey, how you doing? Good, man. How are you? Very well, dude. Appreciate you talking the time, yeah, taking the time to talk yeah. tone with us. <laughs> I was going to ask you off camera about this guitar, but I was like, I want to save the story. <laughs> so tell me about what's going on here because there's got to be something. It's just like uh, that first telly I bought and then uh, just the years of the road just really? kind of beat it, beat it down and the paint job kind of started flaking off. And uh, I did all, I did the rest of the flaking of this off with my thumbnail, like over the course of like eight months of shows. And I just kind of stopped here. Like that's my thumbnail. Like. <laughs> So I call it the Two Face, yeah, <laughs> or the Two Tone Two Face, yeah, and, and uh, it's just yellow and wood and how long have you had sweat it? Sweat stained. It's an 05. Okay, but it's nothing original, but the wood. Okay, well, you know? talk, walk me through what's so, uh, upgraded here. I uh, started playing like acoustic guitars with 61 jumbo stainless, so I really love those. So mm. I pretty much put them on all my guitars because it just makes it just makes you know playability easier and continuity yeah continuity and you're like you know one day i had that epiphany of like hey you know what you can do with a guitar you can make it how you want it to play <laughs> you know like so uh i started doing that and, like the back of the neck is all sanded down the lacquer sanded off because it started coming off but then i started having my guy um sand the neck flatter because i like flatter necks mm. so to kind of contour it more how i like to play and uh what's this guy in it pickups are texas specials right now fender all custom right. shops uh, just a good, great pickup, and uh, yeah, wiring's all different, but that's this one, you well, know. Looks like you're in the market for a pickup yeah. selector knob. Yeah, well, they never <laughs> stay on, man. Oh, yeah. I don't, I've super glued them on. I just bent it up a little, and it's uh, it, it still works. works. Yeah, it's great. Anyways, that's the number one. I play that on mostly all the songs until I break a string. Uh, so. Speaking <laughs> of strings, what strings you got? These are uh, GHS like tens. I, I, Go back and forth between boomers and um i like the progressive they okay. have a progressive brand that they make it's like a different alloy mm. so just what do you like about the differences is um, it more a play thing or a sound it's more of a sound thing to me the the progressive ones kind of don't have a, a on the like the e the b and the g a little less shrill to me mm. like boomers are great they're just they boom like they just they're there but yeah. uh those progressive ones kind of they they taper it a little you know okay Kind of like what a compressor does a little yeah. bit too, like takes the shrill out just enough, just a little. Yeah. So you're not just, ah. anyways, that's how I feel about that. Excellent. <laughs> what do you got over here? This is another story. Telly. Yeah, this is uh, this is the backup telly. It's a great, great guitar too, but this one's nicknamed. You told us uh, off camera that this is 
flown before. It has flown. I nicknamed this one Superman. So this was one of Whitey's backup tellies, and uh, he gave it to me a few years ago. But uh, won't get into the details of the show. But every now and then, you know, you're not happy. And uh, this thing flew down a flight of stairs to a landing to fly, turn the corner after it hit, and landed between two people having a conversation. And uh, it kind of got a little, uh, you know, little scar there. Can so we, uh, I called it Superman from that can day. Can we reveal who was the chucker? <laughs> oh, Whitey. He okay. Whipped, whipped, <laughs> he whipped this thing. <laughs> but uh, yeah. And cool. Anyways, it, then it became mine. And it's it, great. I love it. I said the same thing done. Sanded the neck off. It's got 61 jumbo stainless on it. This is original. This is just like American standard yeah. telly. And uh, it's, you know, can't beat them. Strictly uh, backup or is there some um, to use it for? I've, I've played it, you know, depending on how I'm feeling. Sometimes I'll play this one, but that's my main. That's my baby. Yeah, <laughs> clearly. Might take it with me. At no. least you haven't started chipping this one yet. No, no, not yet. This one's, this one's, this one's staying together. So. Yeah, man. Cool, man. Dig Two it. guitars. Dig it. That's it. <laughs> what do you got for an amp? Um, running the Dr. Z 50 watt head. It's pretty much just like a black face super, uh, super reverb, 65 ish, and uh, you know just clean power. Sounds real great. There's um, this is a 212 cabinet. It's got um, Nailer 50 watt. Uh, speakers in it and uh, I've been running just one now so it's just kind of one you know it rounds out the tone more yeah and uh, just 50 watts to one speaker and it's been working pretty good so cool. it's a little, little bit of an illusion but hey. yeah <laughs> is there a reason uh, I mean, this is possibly a dumb question but I'll ask anyway is there yeah. any reason why you have the top one set for the speaker rather than the other one yeah it's just up higher like you're standing here you know and you here. got yeah it's just okay. so it's not blowing down by your feet yeah and with the other one on, it was just actually it was strange. It was kind of just muddying it up. I've just done this recently and noticed how more focused the tone has gotten, you know. And, you know, I mean, I change this stuff not often, but, you know, I'm, oh, constant, it's a constant evolution yeah. of like being like, oh, you know what I can do? Let's try that. And I'm like, you know. It's what keeps us in business. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so otherwise, we'd, have to, <laughs> yeah. we'd run out of magazines. You know. Cool, yeah, man. Yeah, man, it's a good head. Sounds great. Excellent. Been playing for a while. Pedal Pedals. board. Yeah. It's not too crazy, but, uh, I got one for looks right now. It's not plugged in. The Sonic Sound BBE, but one of my favorite pedals, not expensive. Kind of just if uh, when I'm having trouble finding a frequency area to play in and it's like muddy stage, I plug that thing in and just kind of leave it on a low setting. And it kind of just shifts you out of the way to me. And uh, it really helps. And uh, let's see, the Flint by Strymon, that thing you can't beat. Yeah. Uh, what's the tremolo and reverb? It's just killer. They, uh, they just do things right just putting that in my signal chain has made the signal just sound better hmm. even without it off with it wow. off i put that in i was like wow uh made a huge difference so do you run it uh do you use both I sides leave the of reverb it? on okay. all pretty much all night um like when we play waiting around to die it's got tremolo uh the new one honky tonk hell let's see what else and i turn it on and off throughout the you know i play a solo here and there in a slower song doing some stuff you yeah know. it's good for accenting got the tap switch which is unplugged right now. I gotta plug it in, uh, <laughs> so you can tap it out when you need to do that. Cool. And uh, yeah, man. And you it's got, got a carbon copy, bright analog, digital del or uh, analog delay. Um, I've been playing that for years. Love those things. I don't know. That's, I, just buy one. It'll what do you fix your delay problems? Do you really like <laughs> for echo the the bright versus the yeah, old carbon um, copy? To me, because you could just roll the tone down a little, and it it gets through a little more to me. I mean, the other one's great too. I had that before, mm -hmm. and. When my buddy was like, try this one, I tried that, and I was like, yeah, it is better, you know? I was just just playing around with even having a, like, on a neck pickup, like, you just roll the, if it's too bright, just blow it down a little bit. It has, like, a better, like, attack, and when you're, like, I can feel, like, it translates yeah. better to me, like, what you're doing here into an effect pedal, <laughs> you know? Yeah. When it's coming out, so. And the Nobles, is that just kind of for solos? Yeah, it's, I kind of running that as a clean boost right now. Um, it's a good pedal. Um, I don't think it's going to stay there for much longer. I think I'm going to... Maybe get it like um, Whitey's got an EP boost over there. I love those, and they're just simple. But I, I don't know. I like it. It's, that where I have it set right there to me is a really good. I have the level cranked and mm -hmm. the drive turned down, and uh, you know, just kind of adds a little bit of grit. It gets to me a little too uh, compressed up there. Yeah. For that, you know. And you already got the compression going. Right. So. I mean, it just starts to you know drive that point home a little too much. So yeah. And the Nobles is that something you use like? I really enjoy your guitar work on like I'm on fire. Yeah. And like the, it, the obviously it's a slower song, but the way that it really makes it musical for me as a listener yeah, is how it you sustain the yes, notes. Yes, that's totally on. Yeah. Along with the compressor and the delay. Because <laughs> those notes that you yeah. they just hang there. They're they're there, man. It, 
yeah. a little of this, you know. Tones in the hands too, you know, you gotta For sure. <laughs> you gotta you gotta have a little of that pitch black tuner favorite you can read those in the sun on a festival stage in case you wondered that's why i love them yeah yeah <laughs> it's all about visibility yeah i'm always like that's the tuner oh and this noble thing this overdrive pedal this is the first one i've ever seen i don't know if you can get in here but the nine volt goes right here if oh. you're ever needing to put a battery in it which is about the most brilliant thing i've ever seen on a pedal <laughs> yeah have you ever <laughs> ran it with the, the the nine volt to see kind of sonically some people say they like the battery power yeah i mean I don't, that one wasn't designed like in that time, you know, when the, yeah. the components inside were for the nine volts, you mm -hmm. know, I mean, this one sound, I, it sounds the same to me, but like, uh, you, you get one of those like old, uh, tube screamers and stuff yeah. that were designed off nine volt circuitry, not running on, uh, power, power, power stations, supplies, pedal yeah. power. Yeah. So. They, they claim, I don't know, man. I just plug some, sometimes I just plug it in, turn it up, and I'm like, let's just play, you know. <laughs> it's a rock and roll I go band, back man. And, I go back and forth on the, uh, I used to have a small smaller pedal board than that. I was just like, through two things and, you know, a tuner, and I was like, this is great. Let's press these two buttons all night and just, like, just play it, not worry about it. Well, raise hell tonight, Joey. I will, man. Appreciate Congrats it. Congrats on the plan. Yeah, man, thank you. This, this is great. Beautiful, beautiful and a privilege and an honor to, to get to play here finally. And, Kill it, man. Keep it going. Talk thank you so much, guy. man. Yeah, thank you. All right, last but definitely not least, maybe potentially the most important guy in the country <laughs> band, Brett. Brett, how you doing, man? I'm doing good, man. How you doing? Very good well. Good to be here. I'm very glad that we're able to do this. You know, uh, another fellow host, John Bollinger, plays Pedal Steel. Yeah. So we don't get to feature many of these uh, on camera. So talk to me about this beautiful instrument you got here and how you kind of developed yourself as a steel player because, you know, it's not maybe a thing that a teenager gravitates towards. Right. Uh, yeah, I was um, in my early 20s and I was playing playing guitar in a country band, you know, playing Merle Haggard and mm -hmm. Waylon and um, it didn't take me long to realize that what really drew me to that stuff, especially like the live Waylon album, uh, was the steel guitar. Yeah. And we didn't have a steel guitar player, so I ended up... Uh, finding a little show bud single neck guitar on consignment and uh i met whitey within that year and joined his band yeah so, you've been in the 70s for a while yeah so uh all almost most of my 10 years playing steel have been on the road with him cool full time so it's just been kind of right into the fire yeah right, right? Yeah. and so how did you get this this masterpiece well over the course of all that time my gear has slowly <laughs> gotten better and better like it does you know um just like i got yourself this i got this yeah exactly you know uh I got this a couple years ago. This is a Show Pro um, steel guitar that's they're still built in Mount Juliet by a fellow named Jeff. Oh, wow, Sabat. just down the road. Yep, and uh, it's the finest guitar I've ever touched. So it's uh, it's great. It's got uh, Bill Lawrence um, 705 pickups in it, uh, nine pedals and six knee levers and. Dang. But yeah, it's it's my it's my favorite guitar I've touched. So, is there a lot of maintenance to this from night to night or day to day in terms of you know setting you know, it up, tuning uh, it, keep everything when, working, the levers and stuff? Especially when I was playing older guitars, you know, because like show buds and these classic vintage guitars, um, you know, you really have to be a mechanic. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like uh, it's like learning to play guitar, but also learning to be a guitar tech at yeah. the same time. Yeah. Just out of necessity to keep the machine working. You mm -hmm. know? But um, this guitar gives me no trouble. You know, it's it's really easy to keep keep lubed and cleaned. And, cool. Uh, other than Whitey rocking out and you know sweating on an end of it sometimes or something, it's uh, yeah when it's he's safe like, in a case somewhere. You know? <laughs> when he's when he's orchestrating the solo and tosses between you and Joey, yeah. I yeah I love that. He's kind of like the the ring man, ring leader. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's definitely uh, kind of all just comes about live. You know, it's rock and so. roll. Yeah, it's fun. And then so behind, oh, I'm sorry, strings. What do you use for strings? I love these uh, Diodario uh, NYXLs um, that they've been making. Uh, I use the lighter gauge, the lighter gauge of them, which has an, uh, uh, an 11 gauge third string here. But uh, they last better than, oh, all right. than everything I've, I'm really lazy about changing my strings. <laughs> it's a, it's a uh, I don't know, it's, it's really a pain uh, it to me. It looks like a daunting task. Some guys are really, you know, just every day they change their strings, but uh, I'm bad about it, so I need a string that I can get away yeah. with a little more, you know? And those seem to, to last the longest for me and sound great, so. Cool, and then uh, I kind of overlooked it with the other guys, but this is really important to you is uh, the picks and the bar you're using. Oh yeah, I, I, I don't know if you've ever used a Fred Kelly mm -mm. thumb picks. They're real comfortable. 
Um, I'm not even sure what these are. Uh, this is a, um, a BJS bar, which is a great uh, chromed, polished chromed bar. Which Have you is messed around new. with a bunch of that? With a bunch of what? A bunch of like different bars or like in terms yeah, of materials yeah, it's, and stuff? You know, it's, it's a, it's a, uh, it's like anything, you know, it's bar pressure is important to tone and intonation yeah. and, and everyone's hands are different. So, uh, I'm comfortable with this one. It's a, it's a 12 string bar. It's a little, also I got long hands. So, you know, you really want your bar to kind of land in the, in the crook right there, you know, kind of like the pocket. The, yeah. And it gives you a little spot and every, and the normal 10 string bars just made my hands hurt, you know? Yeah. And once I, I actually, from a Paul Franklin video, he was like explaining how he measures, you know, that for a student. And I was like, he's the master. Well, there you go. You know, I wish I'd known that when I started <laughs> playing. Cause, but there you go. That's why a good teacher is important, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Well, before we move on to the amp and your uh, effect box back yes, behind sir. here, can we just hear some of the sweet music? Yeah. Yeah. My grandpa will be very proud that I'm standing here next to a steel player doing my job. This is this is amazing. So thank you, yeah, Little man. Walter man. That's yes. another uh, local company, or at least yes. to Tennessee. Um, well, uh, they're built they're built in North Carolina ah. by a sweetheart of a fellow Phil Bradbury. That's right. I get I get them associated yeah. just because of Vince Gill uses. Yeah, them. yeah, and Paul and Paul Franklin. Yeah. And this is actually I just got this amp a few weeks ago. Um, I've always wanted to own one of Phil's Phil's amps and. Uh, this is Paul's new, uh, it's the, the 89, it's 100 watts, uh -huh. four 6L6s. Um, the thing I really love about this amp is that the EQ section is all passive. So, you know, wide open, it's just my guitar. Yeah. And then it's, these just function as cuts, you know, just kind of dial back that tone a little bit. So it, you know, um, Phil's philosophy of not adding anything yeah. to your sound, you know? so. It's the loudest, cleanest platform I've found to play steel with, which is the most important. Thing, yeah, you know? and, and 12s or 15s? Actually, uh, one of them is, I don't know which one, one is Paul's Paul Franklin's 350-watt uh, uh, PF350-12. That's some headroom. And it's it's a tank, you know, and it, it's, uh, it won't get shrill. You know, it won't get brittle, which is, which is amazing for steel guitar. Yeah. And the other one is Paul's new uh, 15. It's a 400 watt 15 version that complements that 12 really nice. So, and it's not, I don't know when it comes out. That's one of, uh, Eminence sent me that one, but um, they sound great together. Yeah, really. Whitey was saying you're a big fan of the Eminence. Yeah, I, I, they're the best, you know. I mean, they're made right up the road in Kentucky. You know, uh, I think the whole town of Eminence, Kentucky works at the factory pretty That's cool. much, you know. It's kind of like with Jack so, Daniels and everyone there in yeah. Lynchburg. And most importantly, they sound better than, you know, anything I've used, so. And last but not least is your uh, effects box up yeah, there. Yeah, and this is another uh, another Paul Franklin feature here. His uh, the Paul Franklin Steel Dream that Sage Benedo builds in Elizabethtown, Kentucky, and it's just an overdrive, um, uh, a delay, and a reverb, a spring style reverb. And I use it pretty much as as an always on okay. sound. You know, um, I go from anywhere from you know what you heard that mm -hmm. kind of. Uh, to maybe simply turning up the spring effect. And now, are, during the show, is this where that's parked at? Is behind yes, you? So you're right making there. you're making the and, adjustments and, behind you. And honestly, it's it works out great with the set because you know it's our encore song is really one that I lay on some reverb with so it doesn't it doesn't mess me up at okay. all but um but just with a little bit more you know uh a little sweeter yeah but, uh, just hangs there a little bit longer yeah and the drive, I imagine that's just uh, there for kind of a dirtier song. You know, it just depends. I don't use it much with uh, Whitey. Mm -hmm. We've we've got a, a 
a ZZ Top song on the new record, so oh, I'll, I'll be using it. But um, I love it also because it, it can, uh, I don't really have it dialed in right now, but it'll give me a little bit, like if I wanted this thing to sound more like a deluxe mm -hmm. and just kind of take a little bit more of that headroom out, it's this uh, Sage's Nutri Drive is a really nice kind of subtle overdrive and clean boost kind of, cool. you know, it's, it's, it's really good. And uh, what song is on the new record by ZZ Top? Uh, just Got Paid. That's what I was just going to ask, yeah. which is a and great it's, groove. It's great. It's, yeah. it's, it's a little, it's a little sludgier. It's, it's greasy. It's good. I like yeah. greasy. It's and the other, the other thing I'd tell Ooh. you, I'd love to tell you about is this, uh, Oh yeah. That's and I mean, Real really cool. the first thing that, you know, happens is this volume pedal. And uh, Dave Beatty out in Arizona is building these Talonix pedals, and he started uh, he started out in the '60s. I think he like invented geo tracking for wildlife. So he's a smart dude. So he's got all these engineers in his company now, and they all they find out a few of them are musicians. And anyways, he set, they all set about out of their own interest in music to tackle fidelity in a real way in a yeah. volume pedal and I, this thing it's got nine different tapers you know you can pick from you know good rich pot pedals different wow. pots you know and it's all programmed in there it's really uh, super versatile yeah what and none of this would sound that good if uh you know something less less quality was right there so brett thank you so much yeah. i'm gonna have you take us out i'm gonna give us an outro i'm gonna have you play us out real quick yeah your guitar rig rundown check out whitey's new album and October, Hard Times and White Lines. Take away, Brett. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching the latest Rig Rundown. Guess what? Every week we upload a brand new rig rundown to premierguitar.com a full week before it's available here on YouTube. So to get your gear fix as soon as humanly possible, go to premierguitar.com forward slash rig rundown. And while you're there, be sure to sign up to get an email notification so you're the first to know as soon as each week's new rig rundown is available. Cheers. See you soon.